today's topic is lateral epicondylitis management. I will share my arthroscopic surgery review. I'm Cholavit Jalalit from Sinakalin Vido University, Thailand. Uh, as we know that lateral epicondylitis, or another nickname, is a tennis elbow. Uh, the lesion stay on the ECRB tendon, and the tissue is a less that correspond with the pain generator is angiofibroblastic hyperplasia tissue that Professor Park that used to have to mention before. And the peak incident is stay on the fourth and fifty k. More than half involve dominant size. Uh, in the common clinical and symptom that we use to diagnose is the lateral elbow pain, tender at the lower of epicondyle, cosentes positive. The treatment is adequate multimodality in conservative treatment. Aim to reduce pain and provide progressive load at a stimulant for developed mature and strong tendon. The main treatment is a progressive concentric eccentric resistive exercise. Normally, it heals few cases are need surgery for treatment. When we decide to surgery, uh, I think that we need to know the natural history of tendinosis. Uh, the tendinosis, if we plan to conservative treatment longer than six months, the success rate in person it will be reduced from two digit to be one digit after six months of the treatment. Uh, investigation that I love, I use the MRI, same as Dr. Professor Park said, and I use a coronal cut and choose the pain that stay in the front of the girder of the radio head that might correspond to the ECRB area. The surgery uh, is the key, is the department and get rid the pain generator tissue. Uh, Professor Park talked about nurse operation already, right? Uh, they show a successful result, uh, but the bad thing, only the bad thing that we need to cut the good tissue to expose to the degeneration tissue. This is arthroscopic finding. Uh, this is a viewing from the proximal anterior medial portal. You can see the wide variety of capsular defect in there. This is a correspond to the ECRB area. Uh, in the arthroscopic surgery, we go direct to divide and release the ECRB tendon from the inside. So uh, we not need to damage any good tissue in there. So it looks like that have a minimal invasive in benefit in. This is a video clip to show the capsular defect and I can introduce the chamber and radio frequencies totally to divide the capsule and also the lilies of the ECRB tendon in there. Careful not to damage the LCL. Likansutan tennis elbow is mean a difficult treatment for the tennis elbow, such as a capsulitic tendinitis. This is a 47 years old female, chronic lateral elbow pain for one year. She was treated with a tennis elbow with a two times steroid injection, two sessions of the shockwave, less medicine, etc. Surprising, uh, her previous doctor never investigated anything there. And I take a look on the pain film, I found the uh, calcified tendon in the lateral side in the MRI. Uh, the lesion corresponding with the pain film with the calcific tendinitis. In the sagittal view, you can see anterior and posterior lump of the soft tissue uh, in the post between radio capital room. So the diagnosis for this case, I said that is have a tennis, uh, sorry, uh, lateral uh, synovial pica and calcified tendon. This is a video clip to show that uh, it is, is of the front view have a synovial impinging anterior size. And after we divide and a, a, do the pica excision, we found that the, I found the calcium spill out into the joint. So that means I, I, I start to divide the calcific socket, calcified socket in the tendon too. So I start to divide the tendon, the same as a 
uh, we do the calcified, uh, calcific tendinitis in the shoulder. How about at the back of the elbow, we go to the posterior portal and use a posterior lateral portal for the instrumentation. And we go to divide the olecanon pike, lateral olecanon pica and also the posterior pica. At that at the same time, we check the outer humeral joint opening that not have any opening joint. So that means it took the elbow quite stable enough. And they have many literature to show the successful result to improve a function after arthroscopic surgery for the tennis elbow. But I also do the some paper and show the good result too. Is the lateral epicondylistic? Is the only cause of the lateral elbow pain? My answer strongly no. They have a list of the co common cause that can cause the lateral elbow pain in there like a tennis elbow, pica or synovial pica, cartilage injury and instability. Uh, this is not a new idea. Another concept that have uh, some researcher proposed a new clinical model for interpret of the lateral elbow pain. They try to separate two group of the le uh, lesion. One is extra articular. Most of the time it's tendinosis. Quite classic, it's like a tennis elbow. In this group, longer conservative may be, may be the choice. Interarticular lesions such as pica or the cartilage lesion. Uh, investigation and aggressive surgical treatment may be, may be aggressive than the first group. Tendis elbow is the most common diagnosis for the lateral elbow pain in clinical practice, are you sure? Uh, so this is a question. So I start to to survey on the cause of the lateral elbow pain to the arthroscopic aspect. Uh, I can find out that in the chronic lateral elbow pain that needs surgery, the most common cause of the pain is come from lateral capitulum pica. This is a video clip to show that the synovial fins go to impinge in between lateral capitulum joint. And how about if we include instability together and we found that pica is still the major one and tennis elbow just only 17 percent in there here is a combined lateral epicondylitis and synovial pica you can see capsular defect in there and also the anterior pica or synovial fringe that can go to in impinge in the lateral capitulum joint what is a synovial pica? It's a remnant of the septum when we develop elbow joint. They have a four type in there, anterior, lateral, posterior, and the last one is a lateral olecanon pica. This is a die arthroscope view. Uh, uh, we start from extension and go to fraction. You can see that the soft tissue can go in the late aloe that uh, indicate the edge of the synovial finch. They can go in, impinge in lateral capitulum joint. In the case that uh, this, this edge of the synovial tissue is thickening enough, sometimes it can rub on the little head and make a sound like a snap in the elbow. When, the, when we let the, the water in, and you can see that the, the, the synovial finch can go impinge in lateral capitulum joint and can cause the pain in there. Here is the picture we don't keep on the, at the back. This here is a, a, a lateral olecanon pica. And right now I divide the posterior pica that stay in the back of the little head. In the case of circumferential pica, that's quite common found in, in, in the pica lesion. I believe nurse procedure is inadequate to detect the order of the lesion. In my concern is uh, if we just really do the cut on the in the front, maybe we will relieve to have the posterior pica and may cause the pain persist. Another cause of the recalcitrant tendinitis is like a cartilage lesion, such as the, in the, the left picture, you can see the cartilage lesion in the capitulum. OCD, 
event stable or unstable type and also the cardiolation in the lateral head facet or even in the limb of the lateral head. Another cause, instability pain. Uh, the pain at the lateral elbow, that collector of instability pain, the collector it will be like a pain related with the pushing activity, such as like a push-up or chalice. Prolonged tennis elbow and steroid injection uh, were the cause of instability. And we have a many literature to document in that too. And Professor Park also showed the paper in that too. Me also, we, feel, we found many people have steroid injection and have the rupture in there. Uh, when we, I review to take a look on the tennis elbow surgery, Morley report incident of radio tunnel syndrome about 15%. Uh, when I approach there, I feel that radio tunnel syndrome in my experience, I believe I, I can remind and I think that just only one or two cases that I was surgery for the lateral tunnel syndrome. So I think that maybe it not, it not exists in this world. So I conduct the study. The question is tennis elbow and instability pain. The first step I conduct the study about the functional instability test in the tennis elbow. We found that 98% show the negative result. So uh, suggest that if we file any functional state instability, such as a postural daily apprehension test positive, you should finding the hidden instability pain in size. Another study that I conduct, I survey the 36 case of chronic lateral elbow pain and we find the instability pain with the clinical finding such an examination, such as a functional instability like a apprehension test, push-up test, chair test, and also review the MRI. And we found that six cases of from the 37, 36 patients found, found instability pain. Here is the, the, the video clip to show that this nurse uh, she is a nurse and used to take have a four times steroid injection and have a chronic lateral pain and, and refer to me to surgery. This is video clip that to show the postural lateral test positive. I just clean it up the soft tissue and show the capsule and you can see that the, the they have a, a large amount of motion in the test. In that study, I used the pulmonary strong cut and reconstruction of the uh, LUCL and have shown the success result. How about the R2 score? Uh, later on, we then moved to the R2 score and we also found that R2 score can document our no humeral joint opening in there. Another case also have the widening of the our no humeral joint. So we shift to do the arthroscope, LCL reconstruction, and we can stop the opening there. Here is the of the four up. She can push up better and no any pain. So in the future, I will publish this paper and also the publish the te technique of the arthroscope reconstruction in there. In summary, uh, arthroscopic surgery for chronic lateral elbow pain or tennis elbow is like a minimal invasive and direct attack to the lesion, especially for the tennis elbow, and show and have a many evidence support in the successful results. The key is Precisely diagnosis and detect associated lesion is the key to success of the surgery. 